Now, the next step is to make the sound a little bit more interesting. At the moment it's pretty plain. And where really contact uh, shines is using its um, um, engines that are derived from a granular uh, synthesis uh, approach. So if I go into the source area, as you can see, I have as a default uh, direct from disk streaming um, engine. This simply plays back the sample from the hard disk. But if I click there, I have a few other options. If I click sampler, nothing really changes. The only difference is that the sample is loaded into the memory of the computer before being uh, played back. So if I play it now, I hear la, 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 la. the same sound. What makes contact interesting though is that I can change the engine. For example, if I go to a tone machine, now the sample is treated in a different way. It's not simply just played back and transposed, but instead is passed through a um, granular synthesis engine. So if I play the sample back now, Already, I can hear some interesting overtones and some interesting effects being applied to my original sample. So let's say I like this, 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 this variation. So I simply go to File and I want to save it as something else. I'm going to select Save Edited Instrument and I'm going to say Simple Pad LA Voices. Now because I already saved the patch and samples before, I could just save the patch because I didn't add any new sample. So I'm gonna just do that. When I'm in the tone machine mode, I can actually tweak the sound even more. So for example, now that I have full access over the, the, the granular synthesis parameter, I can, have, I can change the speed and the smoothness to, uh, with which all the different um, grains are going to be uh, shuffled. So if I lower the speed, the grains of the sample of the original sample are played farther apart because I have a high smoothness it sounds very smooth but if I lower the smoothness I get almost like a brassy kind of effect and the format allows me to change the color and the um, shape of the original sound Like a darker, sort of like more male type and brighter, almost like more kids shape sound. So very, very interesting um, characteristics. But of course the, the sound is very dry, so I can make some more improvement. and the effects are going to help me a lot here. First thing, let's say add the re let's add the reverb. To add the reverb, I can add it as a send effects. That's usually the right way to do it. So what I'm going to do is that in the instrument send effects area, I'm going to add a reverb. And here I have my usual parameters for a reverb. Uh, I put a delay, size, so I'm going to make the reverb a little bit bigger. And um, if I click on the sand area up here, I can decide how much of the signal of this instrument is going to be sent to the reverb. Like, uh, so in, the, in this case, I have a good amount. Let's hear it. I'm going to make the size a little bit bigger. a little bit more return, so I can hear the reverb a little bit more. So 
So now the sounds start having a little bit more of a of a, of the of a shape of a, of a real sound. But I can also do more. I can go into the inserts and add some more exotic effects. For example, I can add um, flanger. And I'm going to add a little bit more wet signal and maybe a little bit less dry. So as you can see, we're really shaping the original sound into something totally new. I want to show you one more thing. If I change the audio engine again, and I go to a time machine, and I have three time machine options, now the engine behaves in a little bit in a different way. So if I change the engine and I play, As you, can, as you can see, now the, 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 the timing of the sample doesn't change. And each grain is played in different, uh, at the different distances in order to maintain the speed. I can control the smoothness and the speed. Of course, if I go to a speed close to 100%, I will get the, the original sample. Right. And if I go faster, the sample gets faster. The, the, but the pitch doesn't change. So usually I like to have a you know, lower speed and uh, experiment a little bit. Also the grain size is an interesting parameter to change. Especially if I go in the low register, I can create some interesting effects. Think about um, also that you can assign all these parameters to different controllers. So I can just right click and select learn MIDI control automation. And um, I can assign just any parameter to any control change. So that's a very useful if you want to um, shape your sound in real time. If I like this engine or if I want to experiment more, I can just click here and say, let's uh, check out Time Machine 2. Again, it's just a different way of treating the samples. So it's a very interesting situation. And there is a new engine um, with Time Machine Pro where I can control in the speed a little bit more automatic. Wow. 